What is Bandai doing? They're releasing a fourth major card game in an oversaturated market, in a miserable economy, with the largest marketing push of its kind, with little to no handling of previous issues. Dragon Ball Super TCG is in a coma. Digimon is finally getting back on track after a very long series of questionable game design decisions. And the One Piece TCG can't even be played with how insanely limited events are, and how hard it can be to get some product. We all know that Battle Spirits failed in the West previously, but this time Bandai is bringing with it a titanically large marketing campaign, targeting an insane number of influencers all across the spectrum. Almost as if their goal is to literally sponsor enough creators so that no one can badmouth the game. Despite this, some numbers for this game are relatively weak. Traffic is weirdly held down across the board, especially in comparison to the insane marketing budget. Despite the big successes that the creators that do cover it create for Battle Spirits, the content is often minimal, underperforming, or just corporate. So what does this all mean for the Battle Spirits trading card game? And better yet, what are you gonna do when the money runs out? To begin to understand if their marketing is working, we need to understand just who is their target market. Judging from their budget, it would have to be everyone, or a general audience large enough to make their money back. Their sponsors certainly point to an unstable mix of traditional card game players and a more generic nerd pop culture audience, almost trying to cash out of Wizards of the Coast controversial moves in the industry. There's gotta be more to it than just that. Any company with such a large budget would most likely have concluded that they could make money somehow. Perhaps it's that by spending any amount of marketing in a traditionally zero market space, Bandai hopes to suddenly galvanize a large market share. Perhaps they're just trying to move enough players from Bandai's other games in the Battle Spirits. These are just the biggest theories on what's going on with Battle Spirits. Unfortunately, I'm not convinced that's gonna work. Why? Well, the next two sections split this up into explaining the marketing with specific examples. Then in the next part after that, we can look at some hard numbers. We can split the marketing campaign into a few sections. Influencer marketing, competitive events, and then in a distant third, local events. Let's start by figuring out if the influencer marketing is working. Remember, the primary goal of this type of marketing is just to get noticed and then to get people into the game second. Their biggest success has been with ProZD and has several skits around the game. What makes this so effective is the repetition on skits. One could and would likely be ignored. In terms of successful views, ProZD is the biggest supporter of this game. So much so that it even has its own crossover promo cards. I'm not a big fan of crossovers in general, but I guess it could get collectors interested. Outside of this, there have been several other big successes, such as Matt Pat from Game Theory, who is a big name, despite the sponsored videos, underperforming significantly. Another has been Critical Role, with another underperforming advertisement, and another one with Charlie, or Moist Critical, who seems to be a bit unimpressed, but the views are fine with this one. And to celebrate the launch, they're having a events that total in over $350,000 worth of prizing. I mean, to be fair, that is just Charlie. Okay, so this all seems standard and good so far, right? But let's open up the floodgates a bit and go for some of the weirder ones. Here is a random Avril Lavigne sponsorship. He was a TCG player, boy. Buy our products later, boy. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that. It's cringe as fuck. Seriously, though, these corporate sponsorships aren't cheap, and I have no idea who this is for. The views are fine, but the engagement is once again really low. And in this case, not all positive. Remember, most viewers can see through corporate advertising. If you want ads that just don't do anything, we can look at the insane low-level quality of VTuber sponsorships. Look at these! There's not anything going on! They're standing in front of a low-quality video, making the same four pre-programmed happy facial expressions on their model. No words get said, and it's just bizarre. It's like a shitty bot account spamming out videos. If you sponsor this, good god try to get your money back. There are a few VTubers who actually do openings, but they're definitely in the minority. There's also these weird bot-like articles they paid money for. And of course, the thousands of TCG YouTubers who got sponsored and sent product for this. It really is an insane number of people. So what am I saying with all this? Well, corporate ads have a negative effect on the community. It might not be the best idea to have Battle Spirits be known as the Raid Shadow Legends of card games. Also, this marketing campaign has long since hit the point of diminishing returns. Most people now know what it is, but that brings the question, how is Bandai actually trying to get people to play it? Of course, the real kicker to Battle Spirits marketing is the $1 million competitive prize pool. It's a massive incentive to go to events and play the game. At least in theory. The problem is that this is only a motivating factor for a sparse minority of card game players who actually want to play competitively. For comparison, the creators of Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, estimates that less than 10% of its customer base have ever been to a sanctioned tournament. That includes pre-releases, FNM, drafts, and pro play. 
Not only that, but the competitive nature of the $1 million prize pool will make it harder for casuals to play the game and go to events. If you thought the tryhards were bad for a game like Yu-Gi-Oh, where the pricing is a used ham sandwich, good god I am terrified as to what community Bandai is accidentally cooking up with $1 million to stretch for. Alright, so this is a bit theoretical. Let's now take a look at the first major event they've had to see how it actually played out. This here is the Battle Spirits launch event. They structured this event to be over two days, and it occurred at the same time as the Taylor Swift concert, which messed with the prices in the local area, making it harder to attend. During day one, players could only buy product. This is one of the reasons why most day one pictures have a weirdly sparse amount of people. People got their stuff and left. Day two was the actual tournament. Hopefully you got the cards you needed like Ice Shield to complete your deck, or it would be a very scuffed experience. During the tournament, rulings were not clear to players, and word on the ground is that they changed mid-event. The rulebook also had major errors. There was also no live stream, limiting the accessibility and hype for fans outside of the event. The most common thing I hear is that it feels like the event was only for Bandai to generate additional revenue. So, how is the local support for the game? Well, based on the incredibly small list of pre-release stores, it's not great. Compared to other game events, it's really small, even with other Bandai games. The early adopter list for events is even smaller, like really minuscule. This is to be expected for most games, but with the ridiculously large marketing in other areas, it's bizarre that this is just lacking. The local levels where most sales will be made. Focusing entirely on competitive events is just a mistake. Numbers-wise, we can also get a good measure of how well they're performing based on their website's metrics. Views-wise, it's the exact same stories as everything else. It's not bad, but the engagement rate is very, very bad. Probably due to all of the advertisement links. For context, this is worse than my shitty website. The website data is a few months behind, but it's not at all behind the marketing campaign. So just take it with a pretty big grain of salt. Let's recap. Influencer marketing has largely worked, albeit with some weird side effects, and a huge financial cost. Competitive events can be successful, but Bandai probably needs to step up their game. And lastly, the local support is just lacking. So, will Battle Spirits be successful? Probably, yeah. Through sheer force, Bandai is going to put this game on the map. It's the Xbox approach to marketing. Nintendo has good first-party titles, Sony has the best overall consoles, and Microsoft has money to burn. One thing missing in this entire video is a gameplay review. It seems pretty good, though I haven't had a chance to really dive into it and get a feel for the meta of the game. The game has been Bandai's flagship game in Japan for 10 years now, so it's hard to imagine them messing up. I'll probably be doing a more in-depth review of this game later down. Who knows how my opinions will change once I actually get to go in-depth on the mechanics. So, subscribe to see when that comes out. To everyone, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.